Well, he's getting his own show! Popularity is a very powerful thing. When it comes to cartoons, certain franchises become insanely popular, some more deserving than others, but you can't deny how big some of these cartoons have gotten. How many of you have heard of Spongebob Squarepants or Frozen before? This usually leads to a bunch of merchandise, movies, video games, and sometimes the creators want to take it even further. Spin-offs. Spin-offs can be very well done, expand the universe and try out some stuff that you probably otherwise couldn't do in the original. But some of them are just... oof. Planet Sheen is oh so funky. And that's why we're here today, to look at what I personally consider the worst of the worst cartoon spin-offs. Keep in mind that this is just my own silly personal opinion. No on their own reboots or revivals though, we already know how bad these two are. Yes. Get ready everyone, this is gonna be a fun one. I know I'm not the only one, but I never really saw the massive appeal to Disney Pixar's Cars films. It's the second biggest money machine for Disney, topped only by the gargantuan Frozen. It was clearly a financial success, but out of all the Pixar films, Cars? Really? I liked the original film, but wow, two sequels and a spin-off franchise about planes? Oh, you hear that? I'm unbelievable. Uh, the orphans! <laughs> ah, I remember the jokes about this film. What's next? Boats! So yeah, planes. You take cars... Plane to the story of a small town nobody working hard and becoming the best at whatever. We've heard this story a hundred times before, and that's what I use to describe all of this movie actually. We've seen this so many times before. You've seen cars, you've seen this. Application. Look, I am more than just a crop duster. We have the slightly cocky but fired up and determined main character, the old retired pro coach, and Mater. Without the accent. Corn. It gives you gas. Catchy. Huh? I'm very confident assuming this movie was made just to sell toys and other merch. You can't feel any passion or effort gone into making this a great movie. It reeks of selling out. Oven mitts, hats, bumper stickers, cool. and I also ordered a thousand commemorative whistles. Which sucks for a company like Disney, since we all know what they're capable of. Of course I wouldn't mind the movie if it was actually pretty decent. And while yes, it's not exactly a terrible movie on its own, it's just super basic and not entertaining in my opinion. The whole racing across the world with jokes about each character's nationality is just way too similar to Cars 2. Si señoritas, the hero of the people has arrived! <laughs> I'm not saying every Disney film has to be drastically different to one another, but two films in the same four film franchise being so similar can't be a good thing. <laughs> Are you crying? I don't cry, I'm British! Hey, I remember VeggieTales. My family used to borrow VCR tapes of the show from church when I was younger. Recently, there was a Netflix exclusive revival slash spin-off called VeggieTales in the House. And in the his house, let's raise the ceiling, hoot hoot. <laughs> you know, for the cool kids. Yeah, kids spelled with a Z at the end. Apparently, the characters have been drastically dumbed down and lost a lot of the original's appeal. Let's give the first episode a watch. The pipes, the pipes are caught. Oh, jeez. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is awful. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Oh, man. The kids' cartoons today, huh, people? Gee whiz. Here's a good idea. Leave Family Guy to rip off Family Guy. Oh wait, that's an awful idea! Makes you wonder why the Cleveland show was created, huh? No, 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 no! I don't think anyone wanted this. Not even the show's creators seem very confident in this decision. Cleveland Brown gets tired of his life in Quahog and decides to make a fresh start with his new family. I'd get it if Cleveland was that interesting of a character, but nope. Imagine if every black guy joke from Family Guy and American Dad became its own show. Well, that's the Cleveland Show, folks. Like when white people make a TV show they think black people will watch. We now return to... Says the Cleveland Show! <laughs> Even when he returned to Family Guy for a few episodes while the show was airing, they treated it like some big spectacle. Genuinely, did anyone find Cleveland that good of a character? Everything seems so forced, and they just seem to have no real reason for making this decision. Oh well, at least the theme song's kind of funky. Emphasis on kinda. Even a band. Through good times and bad times, it's true love we share. 
Surprise, surprise, the characters are copies of... No, no, wait. Take a wild guess of who these characters are copies of. Bumbling dummy father, boring voice of reason mother, awkward and weird teenage boy, baby that acts like an adult, and naggy teenage girl. Hmm. Ah, a bear! Ah, a black man! Ah, you see? It doesn't feel so good, does it? And yet, I actually like it more than its source material. The characters are actually much less hateable. Amazing how taking away personality traits made them better characters. What's up, Doc? If you're ever feeling down in the dumps, just remember, there is legitimately a show where the Looney Tunes, the Looney Tunes, become edgy superheroes. Are you kidding? That's right. Characters like Bugs Bunny and the frickin' Roadrunner are now the most stereotypical edgelord superheroes that make puns in 90s anime villain voices in a gritty metropolis city. <laughs> Who at Warner Brothers was like, mm -mm, those Teen Titans and that bald air kid are pretty popular. Maybe we should just get those classic slapstick comedy animals we have and turn them into superheroes. <laughs> okay, so do we make it something quirky or different? Maybe even a comedic parody of the genre? Since, you know, are the bloody Looney Tunes after all? Nah, J just try and copy whatever the others are doing. And remember, play it as safe and embarrassing as possible. Sounds like a plan, Doc. Because, because Bugs Bunny says Doc. Just do your job, Philip. I personally find superhero movies on their own to be a little too tropey and cliche, with one or two exceptions. Something that's a bad copy of that? Yeah, not a big fan. Still waiting for the Christopher Nolan live-action adaptation of Lunatics. Uncurl your toes! Uncurl your toes! It truly does feel like bad fanfiction come to life, and the personalities of the Looney Tunes boil down to just being guys that make snarky but cool comments about everything. I hear they took the cartoon less seriously in its second season, which admittedly is pretty cool, but as far as the first season goes, it's just too bad not to put on this list. Now all we need is Muppets Revelation or The Sesame Street Chronicles. Let's talk main and supporting characters. A main character is, more often than not, designed to be interesting enough to have them as the focus as of many episodes as necessary. Supporting characters are more often than not supposed to support the main character. Not all of them are like that, but most are. Sheen indeed is. So who on earth thought that giving one of the comic relief characters from Jimmy Neutron his own show was a good idea? Who came up with that? Was it Randy? Did Randy come up with that? Sheen worked well as a funny supporting character in the original show because of his bouncing off the other kids' personalities. Give the guy ten times more screen time with an array of uninteresting, bland aliens, and he comes off as really dang annoying. Hey, where's the bathroom in this place? I gotta go serious bad. His stupidity was entertaining in small doses, not for every minute of an 11 to 22 minute long episode. I was often rooting against Sheen. You just want the guy to be shush. He won't even shut up during the opening theme song. This Sheen is oh so funky. Okay, I get the last part, but the first two lines, you just off, bro. Ignoring the obnoxious main character, the show itself is very unoriginal and boring. You have to force yourself through Sheen's constant jokes, making each scene feel a lot longer than it actually is. Making it all a big blur of Sheen. Do what, monkey, monkey, boing. Not every episode is bad. Just all those with Sheen on screen for over half the duration. And this spin-off doesn't even have the memes! Um, yes, are you going to finish that croissant? Knock yourself out. Before Spongebob, Rugrats was the undisputed king of Nickelodeon. Its popularity got it a few movies, and not one, but two spin-offs. Almost three. This cartoon was a very hot topic back in the day. The last Rugrats series was the extremely short-lived Rugrats Preschool Days, a show in which we join Angelica and Susie through their adventures in preschool. I never saw this on TV myself, probably because Nick got rid of it faster than this teacher seems to be going crazy. Okay, okay, artichoke! Say what you want about the original Rugrats art style, but I think there was definitely a unique charm to its messiness. Preschool Days just has this super generic and a little frightening at times look. And let me tell you, it's not just the art style that's lost its Rugrats pizzazz. I'm not trying to hate something just because it's different. If anything, a spin-off is a perfect opportunity to tell a new story, expand the world and characters, and give a fresh perspective on something we already love. But Preschool Days just doesn't add anything to Rugrats, or cartoons in general. If anything, it just takes a whole bunch away. What do you mean? 
What was so engaging about Rugrats was seeing the world through a baby's imaginative perspective. If you're not adding anything new and only taking away the amazing concepts, lovable characters, and stylish music, then you're just not gonna go very well. Gone. Even the characters' eyes look soulless. Don't look into them too long, by the way. Those kids have seen some stuff. We're left with a group of random baby characters no one cares about. Susie is a jerk, the preschoolers are annoying, and Angelica is both. Even All Grown Up had a new concept. I'd only recommend this one to a very interested Rugrats fan. Just wanted to know what it felt like to be a doggy. Hokey dokey then. Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. <gasps> you monster! As the name might imply, this is Nickelodeon's Ren and Stimpy series, but now it's on Spike and for the mature viewers. The word mature being the most ironic part of that sentence. Learning about this revival spin-off, I gotta say, I lost a lot of respect for the guys that made Ren and Stimpy. Imagine if one of your favourite cartoons got everything that made it different, likeable, and special to you completely removed in favour of shock value jokes. It would suck, wouldn't it? I hate this spin-off, and I'm not even really into Ren and Stimpy in the first place. I can only imagine what hardcore Ren and Stimpy fans think of this. You can tell no effort was put into anything but making this thing totally funny for grown-ups, whoa! Well, it was nice talking to you, mom. Well, Loads of, if not all of the scenes are uncomfortably drawn out, and not just because of the gross-out elements. Join us to see your favourite characters torture and kill innocent bugs and animals, and become mindless perverts with no redeemable qualities. According to my cookbook, that's a recipe for success. <laughs> Adult party cartoon becomes needlessly dark too, and treats it as comedy. Like, I've seen some gross and messed up stuff before in animation, but this is by far one of the worst I've experienced. It feels like a YouTube adult parody of a kid's show, but actually real. At least in YouTube fan parodies, it sometimes works because the situations and characters are drastically exaggerated and satirical. But where do we draw the line between exaggeration and downright cruelness? Break it, stop! Please! Oh! I'm pretty sure a good adult parody would still retain a little of the source's appeal, not for this, though. Throw out everything and replace it with as much swearing, nudity, and violence as possible. Easy, girl. Easy. It's close, but I think this tops even full English for how embarrassingly bad it is. Just because you can make something overly mature, doesn't mean you have to. <coughs> Hey everyone, it's Torch Sheep here. Just want to say thanks a bunch for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope it wasn't too ranty, uh, more so than usual this time. But uh, yeah, thanks a bunch for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave any suggestions you've got for future videos in the comments below. And uh, stick around for some more cartoon top 10s and reviews. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to go watch some Legend of Korra or some Dario or something. A good spin off.